Hey guys, welcome to the channel and another video. Today I'm going to be watching An American Werewolf in London by John Landis. Uh, this will be my third John Landis movie on the channel after coming to America and trading places. Uh, do check that out when you have the time. I understand this movie uh, came out a couple of years before those two, so I'm looking forward to seeing Landis's earlier work and how his filmmaking has evolved over the years. Okay, now to the film itself. I don't believe I know anybody who's starring in the film or I'm, I'm not even familiar with the plot at all. As a matter of fact, this is one of the few films I didn't know at all about till it was recommended by my lovely patrons and YouTube comments. From the title of the movie, I can confidently say that it's about an American werewolf in London. <laughs> and knowing Lattice's style, I'm expecting a little comedy and horror too. By the way, full disclosure, I tried watching this movie in January this year and got to about 15 minutes before the power cut out and I lost the footage. Uh, nothing important got spoiled. I, I don't even remember because it's been, what, nine months and I watched 15 minutes of the film. Anyways, my lovely patrons have been pushing me to get back into watching this movie because apparently it's super worth it. So here I am, nine, ten months later, properly watching the movie. But before we get into it, to help support the channel, I have a Patreon page for full-length reviews and reactions to this movie and over 190, uh, 150 movies, TV shows, early access, and weekly polls for what to watch next. You'll need your own copy to watch along. The link's in the description below, by the way. Please consider being a Patreon. Please subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon for instant notifications. Do check out my other videos. Like if you like this video. Dislike it if you didn't. With all that being said, let's get started. An American Werewolf in London. Landis, let's go. You saw me standing alone. I like this song. And just as a reminder to whoever skipped the intro, I actually watched the first 15 minutes of this film in January <laughs> before the power cut out. Just keep that in mind. I haven't watched past 15 minutes of the film. Frank Oz, okay. That, that's recognizable, that name. Special effects and makeup. Yeah, I've been told that the makeup work here is above average, at least. <laughs> People have told me to keep an eye out for some transformation scene. So I'm guessing it's a werewolf transformation. Here are our two protagonists. Stick to the right, sir. <coughs> you have lovely sheep. <laughs> Boy, keep up the moors. Stick to the roads. Northern England first, Italy later. Right. I mean, we've got three months. They're making their way through Europe. Makes sense. Okay. They've arrived at this small village town. So far, I'm actually enjoying the cinematography, even though I can see the camera is not the best. That's kind of strange. With a picture of a wolf. Where's the lamb? They look so out of place. <laughs> look at that. It's used to witchcraft. Mancini Jr. and Universal Studios maintain that's the mark of the wolf man. Oh, I see. They want me to ask them if they're burning candles to ward off monsters. Remember the Alamo! A joke's out of the Mexican! <laughs> <laughs> I wish I watched the film to understand the reference, but... <laughs> I assume it's funny. We're not that star on the wall for. Ho. Oh. Everybody just shuts up. Shall we go, Jack? Apparently so. You can't let them go. Stay on the road. Keep clear of the moors. That's that's what the truck driver said as well. Keep clear of the moors. Beware the moon, lads. And beware the moon. If I recall correctly, moors mean empty land, grassland. Where the hell are we going? Anywhere. I just want to get away from the slaughtered land. You can't let them go. They're definitely hiding a secret. And we have the full moon. What do you think was wrong? I have no idea. Oh, David. Yes, I'm well aware of how... Pleasant the weather is in Rome at the present time. Thank you. Santa Lucia. 
They have really good on-screen chemistry, these two. Do you hear it? Dude, that's a that's an animal. Must go to them. They're actually concerned about them now. What was it? Could be a lot of things. The Hound of the Baskervilles? Was that a Sherlock Holmes reference? It's a full moon. They're about to get attacked. I love the darkness in the background, it's completely black. That's right, a lovely stroll on the moors. Tra la 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 la. <laughs> where are we going? I don't know, I'll tell you when we get there. Okay, cause... Oh! Oh! <laughs> there it is! Holy crap, that's bloody. Jack! Dude, it's mangled! Looks like the people from the pub actually came to help them. I think that was a werewolf and he turned back into a human. This is the point where the power cut out, so I don't know anything from this point on. Jack? What exactly did he call out? He said, Jack. Well, that would be Jack Goodman, the boy who was killed. He was killed, oh man. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks like a wolf POV. That lunatic must have been a very fierce fellow. They say a madman has the strength of ten. Lunatic? Does he remember? A wolf. Did he say a wolf? He does remember. Yes. Well then, what can I do for Scotland Yard? Uh, we understand the Kessler boy has regained consciousness. Let your boss speak, please. Two strong boys would be able to defend themselves against one man. We have two witnesses to the crime. Oh right, they, they actually have a body of the attacker. I don't know what they're talking about. Okay, things are not making too much sense. Feeling better? No! I think this nurse might have a little crush on David. Uh, no, really, thanks. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I don't want any food. Right. He's not hungry because he went hunting? Ah. Oh. Yeah, there's definitely a spark there. Oh, these are dreams. Okay. It's me. <laughs> Did the cops go to the slaughtered lamb? I really don't know. You're a very beautiful girl. All right, all right, hold your horse. Yeah, this is definitely a flashback, judging by the American accents and the American looking house. What the? No, 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 it's not a flashback, another dream. Dude, that was so convincing. I've just had a nightmare. Not to worry, I've just the thing. I don't know, I feel like... Dude, that was a nightmare inside a nightmare. This is a little surrealist, if you ask me, at this point. Can I have a pizza toast? Get the fuck out of here, Jack. That's another dream? Am I asleep now, awake or what? This is amazing makeup work. Sorry to be upsetting you, Dave. Oh. But I had to come. I was murdered, an unnatural death, and now I walk the earth in limbo until the werewolf's curse is lifted. Werewolf curse? The last remaining werewolf must be destroyed. Oh. It's you, David. Oh, because he survived and he was the last person that werewolf attacked. The undead surround me. Oh. Have you ever talked to a corpse? It's boring. Take your life, David, before you kill others. Oh, that's the only way to cut the bloodline. Beware the moon, David. Even Jack is saying it now. David, what's wrong? Dude, is this... this okay, I, I guess it makes a little sense. My friend Jack was just here. He told me that I will become a monster in two days. Do you have somewhere to stay in London? Remember, I'm just a working girl, so don't expect too much. She actually invited him to her house.
I always say films are a time capsule. And this is the UK in the early 80s. The bedroom. There's only one bed. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps you'd like to watch telly whilst I take a shower. He knows the game. <laughs> yeah, this was the 80s and this is not a big budget movie so I'm guessing Landis needs a little sex to sell the film. <laughs> okay, now that they've done the deed and they're more than friends, where does the story go from there? Like, does he turn into a werewolf and just start killing people? Another jump scare. You're not real. Dude, the makeup is actually very good. A nurse, huh? Tomorrow night's the full moon. You're gonna change. You'll become... I know. I know. You've gotta kill yourself, David. Before it's too late. <sighs> You'll kill and make others like me. I'm not having a nice time here. Yeah, this must sound crazy. I will not be threatened by a walking meatloaf. <laughs> Walking meatloaf. Do I seem crazy to you? He said that tomorrow I'll turn into a monster. I'm torn between feeling very sorry for you and finding you terribly attractive. That's where you want to be, David. <laughs> oh, it's the place where David and Jack were dropped off. A few weeks back. Last full moon, wasn't it? I mean, the escaped lunatic, the one who killed the boy. So, you've heard nothing of this incident? Incident? Hey, listen. That, that boy is in danger. It was a mistake. Don't let him leave here. His tummy clean. There's something wrong with this place. It's almost full moon. He'll change. He'll... That's enough! But it's still a story to the doctor, I think. I'm off. <laughs> Interestingly, I haven't seen any werewolf films. Like, I've seen plenty of vampire movies by now, but no werewolf movies. The scene is too quiet again. Credence Clearwater Revival. I'm not hungry. There's a bad moon on the rise. I'm still not hungry. <laughs> that has been going on for a while, since the hospital, that he's not hungry. Oh man, and the full moon is out. God! God! Dude, how? How are they doing this practically? Wow! Okay, dude, this is amazing! Dude, this looks real. How are they doing this? He's actually turning into a werewolf! His body proportions are changing! Wow! Is this stop motion work? Or is it some sort of expanding prosthetic? And I just noticed the transformation is happening with a very happy music in the background, which makes it extra creepy. He actually turned into a werewolf. Now he'll go on the prowl. <laughs> hey, did you hear something? Just now? Yes. Has David persisted in his werewolf fantasies? Dr. Hirsch, what's wrong? Is this more serious than I know? The whole community is hiding the truth of what actually happened up there. There! Mary, mother of God! Hello? Dude, run! Good lord. I love these werewolf POV shots. Wow. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> what a great cut! It's the following morning and David literally woke up in what looks like a zoo. I wonder how much he remembers. Oh boy. murder victim found half eaten. I've lost my mind. I woke up in the zoo. What did I do last night? You don't remember? I want you to bring David here straight away. I want him in my care. We'll come right over. You know, my body feels great. I feel like an athlete. Last night, six of them, all in different parts of the city, all mutilated. Wait a minute. Wait. He can't account for his actions. Officer, I killed those people last night. Neither did you. You're not gonna arrest me? Don't you think you should arrest me? I love you, I, but I think I did some terrible things last night, things I can't remember. I'm not safe to be with. You gotta stay away from me. I love you, Alex. Tell Mom and Dad that I love them, okay? Oh. Is he actually considering suicide? He sees Jack again. Oh man, things are about to go down. Oh dude, it's a porno film. <laughs> Ooh, he's barely recognizable. What you gonna say, I told you so? If I were still alive, I probably would. This is Harry Berman. Hello. <gasps> Hello. And these gentlemen are Alf, Ted, and Joseph. <sighs> The homeless guys. I could hang myself. No. No, if you did it wrong, it could be painful. You'd choke to death. So what? Let him choke. Do you mind? The man's a friend of mine. <laughs> well, he ain't no friend to me. <gasps> the gun! Don't I need a silver bullet or something? Oh, be serious, would you? <laughs> what a statement. Be serious, would you? It appeared the full moon. Oh! Please! <laughs> Run! It's happening! Oh! Oh, dude! Hey, kid, slowly! Ah! It's funny how they're going in one by one. <laughs> oh! Yeah, I don't think there's any escape from this now. Dude! <laughs> He's dead! What a creative way to show the werewolf. Not full frame, just frantic, jagged camera shots showing the reaction of other people. Oh, brilliant. David, it's David. Oh no, oh no. Either David will recognize Alex and turn back, or he's going to attack her. David. I love you, David. Oh? Oh! Sharpshooters. He actually got him. Oh, man! That was a sad ending. That was a sudden and sad ending. I've got to think about this. I actually like the film, but... Huh. Thank you for the recommendation, guys. Okay, I took some time to collect my thoughts. First off, that was such a different film to what I've been watching recently. I generally enjoyed uh, John Landis' direction in this movie and what it lacked in acting, character development and general story, it made up for in spades, in jump scares, uh, the soundtrack and most importantly, the insane production design, that being the makeup, prosthetics and that crazy transformation scene which we'll talk about. Let's start with the directing and writing by John Landis. This was one of his first films and I can clearly see that it's a passion project. I honestly felt this film was a little rough around the edges in terms of story, acting, uh, and, and the performances. But on the other hand, it really felt raw and authentic as a movie. 
I mean, the story was pretty simple with David and uh, Jack backpacking through the UK before they get attacked by a werewolf. Uh, Jack dies and David survives. The town people intentionally try to cover it up uh, and ship David off to London with a somewhat plausible story of a mad man attack. <laughs> uh, there's a whole subplot of the doctor being the detective and figuring everything out. Anyways, David starts seeing the nurse, Alex, from the hospital and moves in with her after um, his recovery, while also seeing visions of his friend, Jack, who tells him he must kill himself to cut the bloodline of the werewolf. If he doesn't kill himself, he'll transform into one the following full moon and in turn go on a killing spree himself. Oh, and also, until the bloodline is broken, all his victims are stuck in limbo. I have to question the visions though. How, how real were they? I mean, they were clearly visions, so how can there be truth to it? Uh, does it? Does being turned into a werewolf automatically allow for these visions? I mean, did that happen to the last guy who went through this? Uh, was Jack even in limbo? Um, I think we are meant to believe that to, to a certain extent since everything Jack said did come true at the end. Uh, that was a little unclear in my opinion. But then again, that may have been intentional by Landis to keep things mysterious. And that's where I think the whole absurdism comes in play. The situation is so absurd that you get pulled into this rabbit hole and see everything unfold by yourself. Also, uh, there was a lot of subtle humor in this movie, stunning from the aforementioned absurdism. Although I have to say that there were a lot of unanswered questions here. Why wasn't David hungry at any point in the film? Maybe he was craving human flesh. Uh, whatever happened to the patrons of the pub, that, that was completely forgotten about. Or what happened with the body of the first werewolf? Did the patrons of the pub hide the body? How big of a conspiracy does it have to be? I mean, I'm guessing it's not a, a big conspiracy as it would be a very difficult task in keeping everything under the lid because secrets get out very quickly, especially if it's a secret held by a large group like that. On the other hand, we have to keep in mind that it was the early 80s and phones and cameras and information wasn't as fast spreading as they are today. Anyways, it's something to think about. The ending of the movie was surprisingly sad. It was gloomy, almost predicted by the horrible weather that we saw the entire, <laughs> entire runtime. Well, then again, that's the UK. I found it rather satisfying though, the ending, as I did not expect it at all. I mean, he gets killed by the police. He recognizes Alex for a second and then just goes attacks her because, you know, that, that's, that's what a werewolf does apparently. Uh, let's talk about the performances though. Uh, I thought everybody was pretty good in their roles with the notable exception of David Kessler's character played by uh, David uh, Norton. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Please correct me uh, in the comments below. Please don't murder me <laughs> since it's a well-loved film, but I thought his performance was a little weak. Uh, for example, when he called home to tell his parents that he loved them, his face didn't convey that he was about to kill himself, that his life was about to be over. I mean, he was in love with this girl. Apparently, he, he, he had good parents and a sister who's, what, only 10 years old. So he had a lot to live for. So I'm, if I were in the same position, I would be like bawling my eyes out or at least show some sort of emotions. He was actually telling his sister that he, at 10 years old, his parents never left him alone. Is that something you're thinking about when you're near death is what I'm asking, I guess. <sighs> Even like in, in, in situations like that where he was fearing for his life, it didn't seem very believable, like compared to his friend Jack, played by Griffin Dunn. Uh, Griffin Dunn did a very good job with his role. I, I had no issues with him. Or even the actor playing the nurse or, or the doctor. I also think the film lacked character development of our lead, David. He was the same person at the beginning of the film and the end of the film too. Even though he recognizes he should end his life, 
I don't, I don't think his body language conveyed that. He doesn't do it and has to be killed off by the police. Landis's overall direction here was much stronger than his writing. And I think it was a pretty good job because the movie itself felt pretty coherent and well put together. The music in this film was very good. Uh, and I think it was used pretty smartly, but, but, but the director had a habit of cutting the music before every single jump scare. By the third or fourth time, I was bracing myself because I knew something was coming. The soundtrack, it was much better, in my opinion, with classics from Creedence Clearwater Revival and Van Morrison. I love those guys, which I very much enjoyed naturally, but also the sound design itself of the film was very commendable, especially the noises made by the werewolf, which I found pretty intimidating. The true highlight of the film for me, and probably for you, <laughs> were the practical effects for aesthetic and makeup work. Seriously, they're of the highest caliber considering the budget of the movie. I can see where John Landis decided to spend most of his money and what a great decision it was. His not only did the undead look realistic, like Jack um, or the other dead people, what was so impressive was the progressive transformation over time. The amount of change to the point that Jack didn't even look human anymore, that was pretty scary. I think by the end, Jack was portrayed by an excellently made prop with so many moving parts, which I always appreciate. Finally, the transformation scene. Let's let's talk about that. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow. I honestly haven't seen anything done this well practically before, especially for a 1980s film. Even, I, I would even consider this a 70s film because it was, what, 1980 or 81 when this film was made? How did they do that? Were, were, how were they able to show the transformation in real time without CGI? How did they achieve a moving disproportionate body shapes in a single shot how, how how did that torso elongate in a single shot that was insane i i seriously want to know was it just good prosthetic work was there robotics involved i i need to look that up and i i hope that there's a making of video out there somewhere please let me know because i'm utterly fascinated and as i've mentioned uh, my criticisms of the movie already, like the acting and a little bit of the story, which I found a little straightforward. Overall, An American Werewolf in London was such a fun time. Although I felt like the acting was a little weak, I absolutely loved the humor, the jump scares, the soundtrack, and holy crap, the transformation scene. The makeup work, the prosthetics, and the practical effects were so convincing that those alone are worth the price of admission. John Landis's earlier efforts are well worth our time, and thank you so much, guys, for this wonderful recommendation and making sure that I, I, I watch the entire thing properly. Anyways, thank you for watching. I have a Patreon page. Consider being a patron. Subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon for instant notifications. Do check out my other videos. Like if you like this video. Dislike it if you didn't. I will see you in the next one. Bye.